What is up guys and welcome back to my channel. So I'm proud to announce that we did make it to 200 subscribers so that's really awesome. Thank you everyone who watches and subscribes to my channel. You guys are awesome and hopefully we can reach another milestone soon. Anyway, today's video is going to be about iOS 13 so I'm going to be going over not a lot of the features, just the main ones that I liked that I noticed were really big in iOS and I'm also going to be going over the bugs because if you plan on installing the beta there is going to be some bugs. Some of them are pretty major and you might want to stay away from the beta if these affect you so make sure to check those out at the end. So my favorite feature on iOS is definitely the swipe keyboard. Before iOS 13 we didn't have a swipe keyboard so you'd have to install a third party app. So I am in love with swiping, that's the main way I text. So to do that, I have been using Gboard on iOS 12. Now that it's stock on iOS 13, there is definitely room for improvement, so let's just get to talking about that. So the usability is good. It does what Apple says it's gonna do. You can swipe to text and it's, it's okay. It goes pretty fast and it goes semi-smooth. Um, when it comes to predictions or what word you're gonna type next or what word you're currently typing, it's not really that great. But this does make sense because we are on the first beta and again it's the first time iOS has implemented this in their software. It's okay with the predictability but not as great as Gboard has been. Another thing that I wanted to mention is accuracy. In terms of accuracy it's okay as well and what I mean by that is when you're going really fast it doesn't always click all like the characters you're trying to get in. And I noticed with Gboard it is a little bit better but with all swipe keyboards there is the possibility that you think you're swiping it but you're not. Um, you might be swiping over the wrong letter as well. So I found that this one is pretty good. It's not the best, but compared to Gboard, it could use some work. So that's the keyboard on iOS 13. And number two, we have one of the most anticipated design changes in iOS 13. And of course, I'm talking about the volume HUD. So if you're one of the people who doesn't like it, you just have to take a closer look at why Apple implemented it this way. So let's take a closer look at this. When it pops up, it pops up right where the volume up and down buttons are physically on your iPhone. It's also the exact same size as these buttons from the top of the volume up button all the way to the bottom of the volume down button. So I think it's a really smart, neat way to implement this. I know some of you guys are still not going to like it, but you have to appreciate Apple's attention to detail, which is something they've always been known for. I think they implemented this pretty well. It's not the best place that they could have put it, but I think it works and it makes sense to me why they did it this way. You also get not one, but two redesigns of the volume HUD. So now when you're in landscape mode, you do get a new pop-up and that is gonna be at the top of the screen. So the heads-up display is no longer gonna be intrusive either way you're looking at it. Whether that be portrait or landscape mode, you won't get those interruptions anymore when trying to change the volume. So number three is maps. Maps get smarter in iOS 13. But there's two main features that I like and that I wanna talk about. So number one is that Apple says Siri will get smarter. In their website, they have an example of what Siri can do, and it goes something like this. So instead of Siri saying, in the next 1,000 feet, turn left, she'll say something more along the lines of, at the next traffic light, turn left. And I know it doesn't seem like a big deal, but when there is like a bunch of traffic lights coming your way, and you don't know how to gauge 1,000 feet, it kind of helps to have Siri tell you which traffic light you're turning at in case you can't gauge that distance. So I think it is going to make Siri smarter as well as maps, so I'm really excited to try that one out. Number two is that now you can share your ETA. So within the Maps app, once you select your location, you have a little circle that says share ETA. And once you click that, it gives you suggestions of who you might want to send it to. But it also gives you your contacts so you can choose anyone you want to send it to there. So number four is the Photos app. This one's not too big of a difference, but there are a little bit of changes that I wanted to kind of glance over before we head on to the bugs. So now you can categorize your photos within months, days, and years but you can also view all your photos at once by pinching and zooming. So if you like see a picture from far, far away that you kind of want to zoom into, but you don't want to you know, do the taps, now you can just pinch and zoom or zoom out to view all your photos from the years before. So like I said, it's not really that big of an update, but I think it does make it a little bit more fluid and better to use. Now onto the bugs. So we know this is the developer beta. So what this means is that there's gonna be lots and lots of bugs. So I made a list of some of the ones I've experienced. I don't really have examples for any of them because they either happened too fast for me to react or they didn't let me take a screenshot while they were happening. So let me read you guys a list of the stuff that I've been experiencing. So number one is that it randomly kicks you out of apps. This happens a lot and it happens with almost every beta that I've ever tried. So that one's not too big of a deal for me. You just go right back in and it starts up again. Number two is that the keyboard freezes mid-swipe. So that gets annoying real quick, but like I said, if you just swipe up and close it out and open it again, it starts working just like normal. Another one that I've encountered that goes along the lines of that is that the emoji keyboard is just stuck. Like sometimes it doesn't move at all, you open it, and it just 
it's stuck on the like recently used tab, so you can't really access all the emojis. You have to keep swiping and swiping. Eventually it gives in, but it does take a while. Um, this one is the biggest one for me and probably the biggest one you'd want to avoid the beta for, and that is that not all apps are supported by this. The one that hit me the most is my banking app. It does not support iOS 13. I updated it and I did everything I could, but it just does not work. It won't open at all. So I had to download it onto my other phones and it's still working now, but just not on my main phone, which kind of sucks. So if you want to avoid that, um, definitely stay away from this beta because I don't know which apps are not supported, but some of them are not. Um, the next one is that sometimes apps get stuck in landscape mode. And this one's really weird because um, some of them I don't even open in landscape mode, so like I'll open the settings for example, but when I open it, it's on this screen, but it's like in landscape mode, and it doesn't it doesn't really work. So this one is kind of tricky because it doesn't work with just like a reset of the app, so you can close it out and reopen it, but it'll stay stuck in landscape mode. This has happened to me a couple times, and the only way to fix it is to restart the phone. So it gets kind of annoying too, but it doesn't happen too often. So those are all the bugs that I've experienced and some of them are really major. So I would say do not download the developer beta, um, especially if you have important apps on your phone that you use daily. I wasn't aware that some apps were not gonna be supported, but I do only have one device, so I have to do it on my main phone. And yeah, so if you don't like any of those bugs that I just mentioned, probably stay away till at least the, the public beta comes out. And if not then, until the first release of iOS 13. So that's going to be it for today's video, guys, and thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to this channel, please, and I'll see you guys in the next one.